So the weather's getting colder. In order to work inside the bus, I'm actually going to get this diesel heater installed. Right now I'm unboxing this to see what all the components look like. I've had this laying around for months and months, just haven't installed it yet. Alright, so here's what comes with the diesel heater kit that I bought off of Amazon. This is a Chinese diesel heater. It was about a hundred some bucks. Uh, so we have the heater unit itself. I believe this is five kilowatt as far as the output. Might be eight. I'd have to look at the manual. Uh, so this is a base plate, it looks like, for mounting it. Um, it's got the screw holes for this part here. I assume one side's inlet, the other's exhaust for uh, for the uh, combustion. So right here we've got the, a plastic fuel, ta fuel tank they provided. It's 10 liters in size. I'm going to actually use a 20 liter jerry can. Um, it looks like you've got to install your own fittings. I've seen this before in videos. Sounds like a real pain in the butt as far as uh, connecting the fitting to uh, the bottom of the tank. Somewhat annoying, I'm sure. Got the electronic control for the inside, some kind of a keychain control, I believe, to go with it. Wiring harness. Got a bag of various uh, band clamps and fuel filter and other little accessories that came with it. We've got, uh, looks like a uh, pipe for the heating portion of this. We've got an inlet pipe. An exhaust pipe and muffler. Then we've got uh, some various, uh, I don't know what you actually call these, the flow directors maybe for, you know, the uh, inlet and outlet. And then uh, right here we've got the fuel line, the fuel pump. Not quite sure what this is supposed to do. Maybe if you're connecting it to an automotive fuel tank, I'll have to look at the manual. Um, that might be what that's for. So, I could probably use that to siphon from the jerry can, actually. I'll have to look at, the, look at the instructions, but this might simplify my installation quite a bit, making it so I only have to drill a little hole at the top. I shall, I shall take a look at how that's to be used. So, that's what came with it. So, um, what I'm doing today is installing the diesel heater. It actually snowed a little today. It's time to get the inside of the bus uh, easily warmed. I do have that sideline heater in the garage, but I really don't want to run it in here now that I've got so much finished wood. So it's a little too dangerous with the amount of flame that comes out the front of that thing. So anyway, uh, what I've got here is a jerry can. Uh, this was an eBay jerry can. This is the fuel tank uh, pickup that is in the diesel heater kit. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to modify the jerry can as my main fuel tank here for the for the diesel here. What I think I'm going to do is drill this center out on the fuel cap and just have the pickup be part of the cap. Uh, that way I can avoid uh, drilling shavings into the tank. Uh, this spout here I can just uh, dispose of actually. It's not going to be needed. Um, so what I'm going to do is just fill this tank from a different from a different diesel tank um, once it's in position. I just need to make sure that this spout is in a position where um, where it's easy enough to fill with a you know with another can uh, when I do the mount in the back. So uh, my intention is to fold sheet metal uh, to make um, holders for both the tank and the diesel heater itself back there. I've got to drill through the back uh, couch back there to create the venting that I need. You know, so it'll be a whole process, but uh, hopefully by the end of the day I have an installed diesel heater um, with any luck, or at least by the end of uh, the next day or two. So, anyhow, I'm going to get at it. So what I've done here is gently bent this by hand so that it will go in and just kind of pick up off near the bottom, but not at the bottom. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that's the right shape or close enough uh, so that when I put this on the cap and tighten it down, it'll pick up near the bottom of this tank, but uh, not suck any crud off the bottom. So anyway, um, we're going to keep going by drilling a hole in the cap. 
So right there I've got the uh, hole drilled in the cap. It was easy. It's very soft aluminum. So uh, anyhow, uh, the next step is going to be to get the fuel pickup uh, threaded in, into the cap. What I ended up doing here is actually creating a bit of a corkscrew shape in the pickup uh, so that it was easier to thread this cap in. Thinking of refilling the uh, the uh, tank here, uh, you know, removing the cap needs to be easy without necessarily having to undo this. So my thought process, I, I can leave uh, enough of the fuel pickup wire coiled, or or we can loosen this nut a little bit when we take the cap off and let it spin. But uh, you know, I just wanted to make it practical to refill the tank. So anyway, uh, the the corkscrew lets me. Oh, get the angle here. Corkscrew lets me just kind of throw this in real easy, and then minimal ba minimal bang banging or bouncing off the tank will let me uh, get this started here. Sorry for the wobbly camera. To get the cap started, hopefully, got to get it backed off enough. Okay, there we go. Got the thread started, and it finishes up in the top position like this when it's snug. So, yeah, I think the best way will be to just quickly loosen this nut. We'll keep it finger tight. Loosen this so that when we refill, we can keep this spinning, so to speak. So. Anyway, uh, that's my thought process. It should be practical enough for refilling. And uh, so this tank is ready to be ready to be put in the back and we got to figure out what's going to brace and hold this. It's going to be quite heavy when it's full of diesel. Another reason I like this jerry can is that it has a, a vent that can be opened up a little bit for when we're using the, the fuel uh, or tightened down when we're traveling to keep any moisture from getting in. So. Uh, this tank was about 20 some bucks. I got a great deal on eBay about a year ago. Should have bought more than one of them. Uh, but now they're like 50 bucks a piece from what I can tell. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out the mounting of this and the mounting of the diesel heater and start bending some sheet metal and getting it primed. I think I like the idea of mounting the can right here. And what I'll do is I'll extend some sheet metal under here, some angle iron to hold the can tying into this, uh, probably angle iron actually. Um, I'll have a piece going up this way to hold the lip and then I'll have some going across to kind of support the can. And then we could probably come up with a, a metal band or strap that makes the can easily removable for when we need to do maintenance. Um, that would work. I need some sheet metal to shield this from the, uh, the exhaust heat coming off the muffler. I don't want to cook the diesel can that way. Uh, but we do have venting here. Um, so I'll do that with the can. And then I believe I'm going to I'm gonna put the... I thought of either putting the vent for the hot air over here or over there. Um, but again, we've got a lot of heat coming off the exhaust there. The other option is to come up through the deck up here, which might be the smarter way to do this. I can mount the diesel heater up in this panel where it's not really in the way um, and have it go up where I can mount it probably more likely I'm going to mount it this way and have the inlet and outlet you know sort of up in this deck area maybe in the center of the couch uh, for the heat coming out and then it, uh, uh, suck, sucking heat from the cab up on this side that may be the smartest way to do it and we can use the angled venting to kind of direct that heat into the center of the space there. Uh, the louvers that came with the tank. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll build a bit of a shelf here out of sheet metal where it's out of the way of the engine space. And then we'll just have the exhaust come down and vent out probably a hole in the door right there. So that's the thought. What I decided to do actually is just use some angle iron. Uh, that way it's good and sturdy and I'll build sort of a cradle for this where it can be lifted out and uh, Or slid forward out of it and then the strap will secure it in place. So that is the plan 
What I'm doing right now is making the cradle for the uh, fuel tank. I'm just going to rivet it. Uh, might tack weld it later, uh, but I'm doing the basic structure with the rivets. I've got to get the compressor set up with the trusty old rivet gun. So with some rivets, I've actually got the base of this kind of put together. I may actually angle it differently. I've got to think about that. Uh, I might want to tab it and create some supports over to that. I've got to kind of monkey with it a little bit. Uh, but anyway, the, the base is the right shape. Looks like it accommodates. I'll probably put a little bit of rubber in here to kind of keep it padded. I uh, might put a little bit of a pan underneath to keep the heat from coming up into it. But uh, anyway, I am going to uh, play with this a little bit, finish my planning, and then we'll get this uh, installed. I think I'm going to use some angle iron coming off of that to support it if I go the other way with it and then rivet it into this seam along the sides. So we got to look at it see if that works. I think this is the right positioning right here. I'm going to keep it mostly upright and then I'll be able to slide this a little bit forward when I fill it and then slip it right back in. So what that'll involve is creating a bit of a lip behind here and then riveting this to that and then I've got to create some uprights in the back and, uh, and tie in a bit of a strap or chain or something to keep this steady. Um, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll create both sides actually as uprights on a 45. That's probably the best way. And then I can just slide this out to the front when I'm gonna when I'm gonna refill it. That makes sense to me. So that's what we're gonna do. So here's what we have so far. I've got the base plate. I've got some uprights. I'm about to put this piece in between. I made this a little bit wider so that the, I'm sure that it isn't gonna get bound bound up in there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is connect this with rivets. Um, possibly I might actually put this on the outside edge uh, and then we're gonna run uh, we're gonna run some triangular pieces down uh, to hold the sides in place and then we'll be able to kind of strap it in with something you know a little bit of rope or something and uh, it'll stay secure and then when we want to refill it I'll just slide it in, in and out and the whole thing will be easily removable there will be a couple of a couple of rivets right here and then it's just gonna kind of rest on uh, some metal up on the edge of the door and then there'll be uh, rivets that hold it to that so it'll be drilling out a few rivets and and then you know if I need to remove it it'll be easy enough to do. Okie doke so here is the semi-finished product what I'm gonna do is dry fit it drill the mounting holes get this front edge figured out and after that I will uh, probably take this home and weld it with my 110 welder just put some welds on the edges you know keep it nice and rigid and then we'll get it cleaned up and painted um, but uh, this looks like the essential rack I'm gonna try it out in the bus with the jerry can and see see how it works All right there I've got it kinda clamped in place and we're gonna try the jerry can out and see if it slips in okay All right, there it is, and it is sitting behind this enough. So what we'll do is we'll just put a strap in behind here to the front when we're traveling that'll kind of just hold this uh, in place. Not sure if it'll be like a, almost like a men's belt with the uh, cinch on it or, or what. Maybe even a bungee cord would work. That's probably what I'll do. I'll probably just use bungee cord. So. Anyhow, it looks pretty secure. What I'm going to do now is drill holes in through this muffler holder rack here, and we're going to run quarter-inch bolts to secure it. Up here, we'll uh, we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll use uh, probably quarter-inch bolts up here uh, on this part, but we'll rivet down here so the bolt heads don't get in the way. Looks like uh, based on these screws that. Uh, quarter-inch rivets will work well for whatever pieces I use down there. So now I'm going to go get those pieces. I'm probably going to use angle going up this way, um, unless I find some rigid sheet metal that will work, some thick sheet metal. So anyhow, next step is going to be to take the can out and drill two holes in the back through the 
muffler so we can run bolts down through. All right, so there we go. I've got a couple of uh, quarter inch bolts put in. Now I'm gonna fasten metal to the front uh, so that uh, that'll, that part will be steady as well. After that, we'll take this out. I'll take it home and weld it. And then we'll get it painted, probably with black paint. All right, so I've got it to where it's uh, fastened. We have rivets holding tabs. These are just pieces of angle iron. And then I've got on the top half uh, bolts so that I can remove this if I need to access the wiring behind it, for example. So the thought process here, here is that I'll leave some slack on the can uh, so that I can set it down when I'm doing other work and you know, get it out of the way. Uh, I'll leave some slack on the fuel fuel line. Um, but right now I'm going to take this off. i got four bolts holding it on. I'm going to undo those and uh, then this will get cleaned up, welded, and uh, we'll get it primed and painted black to hold the fuel can. Okay, so I'm in my garage here. I'm going to use this wire wheel and a drill to clean this up. Catch the edges where I'm going to put some weld tacks to kind of make this better. Um, you know, the rivets will hold it in place, but I want to put some welds in to be sure I don't want to lose a jerry can full of diesel going down the road. All right, so just to further secure this, I put some ugly tacks with flux core. Just finished, uh, almost finished basically getting the flux core residue off with the brush again. So just a few little tacks per joint just to keep it all steady, keep it from pivoting. It's not pretty, but it doesn't need to be. So I'm back at the bus here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a coat of black tractor paint on this, let it dry overnight. Uh, this is, the uh, again, the rack to hold the fuel can. So i got to find a chip brush and use this old black tractor paint so or Rust-Oleum or whatever it is. All right, so might be hard to see, but I got black paint on this uh, on this jerry can holder, so they'll have to dry overnight, maybe a little longer in the cooler temperatures. So what I'm doing right now is I'm configuring this heater so that I can position it underneath this top deck here. That's where I decided to put it. Um, that's the hot side. This is the intake side. I've wrapped that with duct tape, so it actually goes around the screen that's designed with it. So this will kind of, after I drill holes, I'm going to flip this upside down once I put these pieces on back on the deck. I'm going to position it so that I get the holes aligned straight down. I'll drill them with the hole saw, three and a half inch hole saw. That'll allow, allow me to build the shelf underneath and position this up into those holes. And then we'll use these sleeves for the intake and exhaust uh, at the right length to come up through that hole. I've got some heat resistant fire block foam here. Uh, that's what I'm going to put around each side and uh, that way we'll block any airflow and the engine heat from coming in. Um, so my plan is to have it shifted a little bit over this way so the intake's over here and the heat blows out this way and then we can direct the heat either out into the space or over that way or over that way, you know, with the uh, nozzle that's on it, um, just to kind of disperse it. That way it's not hitting people right in the back of the head when they're sitting here on what's going to become a couch lounge area under the bed, uh, when the bed's in the up position on the uh, actuators. So the bed will be up in, you know, up in here when we're sitting in the lounge area. So anyway, I'm going to get this laid out. I'm going to put the uh, cold air intake as far over here as I can. Well, maybe not quite as far, but maybe about where the tape dispenser is so that the heat flowing out of the unit is sort of in the middle. That's the plan anyway. So we'll see how it goes. So I put the insulation board back on the uh, back deck. I had to gouge out some channels for the wiring. You know, the ones that go to the automotive lighting. That's why there's a bunch of debris there. So... I'm going to sweep that off and then I'll position the heater unit and mark where the holes need to be drilled. I'm going to use the hole saw to cut through that. So upside down and inside the cab instead of in the engine bay, here's the diesel heater. I'm going to go look in the engine bay and make sure I like this setup. But uh, 
This is basically what I'm thinking intake on this side. The heat will come up and be kind of directed with the louver right there. Um, there'll be some nice finished surface here as well, but uh, I'll be able to mark the circles on that as I finish it. So uh, I'll just take the louver caps off and be able to do that. So uh, probably going to be like half inch ply or stained half inch ply or carpeting or something up there. Um, but anyway, right now, uh, I'm going to go look in the engine bay, make sure I like this setup, and then I'll, dr I'll mark the holes here to be drilled with a hole saw down through the top deck of the engine bay. So, that's the plan. So, let's have a look-see here. So, right up in here is the top deck. So, one hole's going to come out somewhere in here, the other one about where this light is. So what I'm going to do right now is unscrew this light so it doesn't get in the way of the drill bit. So actually, I may want to move it over a little bit. Actually, that way I don't have to unscrew that light right now. I may want to move it over just a little bit. So we'll have good clearance there. And then I'll be able to bracket the shelf for it in with folded sheet metal, maybe some angle iron. Just rivet it into this back plate or screw it in with sheet metal screws. Um, and then up here, similarly, this is double thick. So I should be able to rivet to that to hold the heater in place. And we'll just kind of have a shelf right here uh, about where that bead of line is that will hold the heater over on this side of the engine bay where there's... It's really not going to be in the, in the way of anything and it'll have a nice drop down to the tank which will sit over here. So I think that'll work. Just gonna, going to, uh, yeah, I guess I will remove that light just in case I'm bumping into it. It's an old light I'm not using. So right there, I ripped off some duct tape to uh, make the rough markings of where the hole needs to go on each side. So right now I'm going to go down and unscrew that light bulb. And if you look really closely there, I've got a little buddy who's trying to take a refuge from the winter cold in the bus. I don't really have the heart to kick him out, but I also don't want bird poop in my bus. <laughs> so hopefully it decides to make its way to a different spot. Very cute little bird. All right, so once again, we're using the rip your arm off drill bit here, three and a half inch hole saw. And uh, that'll leave a quarter inch on both sides to kind of maneuver. And then we'll fill it in with foam and the finished work will hide it. So anyhow, I'm going to get started on this. Um, try to take it easy and hopefully not hurt myself this time. All right, I'm midway through it. And man, that drill is powerful. I'm just blown away every time I use it. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. So it's pretty hard on the body, the wrist mostly. So anyway, uh, I've got the plugs out. Now what I'm going to do is uh, clear that drill bit, and then I'll take these pieces off now that they're marked in, in the spots they go in, and I'll just drill through the metal carefully. So I have to tell you, using this hole saw in metal, this big hole saw, is one of the worst jobs so far in this bus project. It's brutal. It catches and just whacks you. So be really careful. I know I said it in my last video, but I'm just blown away with how hard it is to run a big hole saw like this. There we go. I think it's about time to get the shop vac running back here. Get things sucked up. I've got the lid here. So, anyhow, um, once I get the shop vac cleaning up the debris from drilling, I'll put the lid back on. And then, uh, probably next time I come out, we'll work on the, the shelf for the diesel heater back there. Um, I should be able to do it out of folded sheet metal, you know, basically at the size of the, the base of the, of the heater itself, and maybe a number of rivets to hold it to the uh, existing metal. That ought to do the trick. I may stiffen it with some angle iron to be determined. I don't know exactly, uh, exactly how, how bouncy it's going to be. I'll probably try to use thicker sheet metal, some 16 gauge or 14 gauge, and uh, see if I have some laying around I can use. All right, so I'm going to take this uh, former interior panel under from under the windows in the bus, 
and I'm going to turn this into the shelf for the diesel heater by bending it with the uh, with the bending brake inside the shop. So I've got to take some measurements. I'm going to make it double thickness um, so that it's good and strong, and uh, that should last a good long while. So I'm going to take some measurements, figure out what the bends need to be, and then we'll get this. Uh, we'll use the existing screw holes on the inside there uh, to you know to be sheet metal screw positions so anyhow I'm gonna get at it take some measurements and get it folded so I've cut this shelf uh, made it double thick with this galvanized metal I'm gonna use sheet metal screws and rivets to hold it to together rivets to hold the layers together and then I'm gonna sheet metal screw it into the bus I've got to use the hole saw to cut out the outlets for this and then we'll use this uh, cover plate from the inside. We'll sheet metal screw down through these holes and this will actually uh, serve as the, the mounting bracket for the diesel heater itself. So these holes hold it in with the these holes here hold it in whoop, falling over. These holes hold it in with bolts that thread down through and we've got intake and exhaust so I just have to make sure I orient it correctly and then uh, probably fasten it to the bus with self-tapping sheet metal screws. Here at my garage, I uh, just used a thin cutoff wheel to kind of finish cutting that out. Uh, didn't, didn't know where I put my angle grinder over at the bus, so um, it's been a while since I've needed it on that project, but uh, very useful tool. So that's cut out. Now I'm gonna use this plate to get it positioned to uh, receive the uh, diesel heater. All right, so I have that bolted on at this point. Now I can uh, set the diesel heater in here and get it bolted to the flange. Okay, so I've got this positioned on the flange. I did not realize it was a little bit offset. Too late to fix it now, it'll work. So I'm gonna bolt this down into place with the nuts that are likely in the bag there. All right, there we go. I've got the uh, diesel heater bolted onto the flange, flange bolted to the shelf. Whoop. Trying to drop everything on the floor here. Um, so that's ready to go. A little bit offset, but I guess it'll be okay. Um, so the next step is going to be to take this to the bus, get it mounted in place under the holes. Got to get those aligned. And uh, what I'll probably do is just start one screw in the top to hold everything in and then uh, maybe one or two actually and then get the clamps put into place uh, for the tubing to go up it's going to be about six inches of tubing overlapping there or going up into the living space uh, that tubing's still at the bus so anyway i'm going to go to the bus now so i'm about to mount this shelf what i've done is i cut the tubing in half that came with it this is a factory edge, this is the cut edge. Um, what I'm going to do is slip these up into the holes, up in here, if you can see those, and uh, we'll get the shelf screwed up into the ceiling and into the, into the side here with some uh, sheet metal screws. I might use some self-tappers to start with. So this came with, with a few self-tapping screws for this purpose. Well, for mounting the base plate anyway, I think four of them. So I'll use those to get it started, and then I'll use some uh, some sheet metal screws I have to drill for after that to really make it secure. Okay, so right here I've got this hanging by one sheet metal screw. Uh, I'm going to get it positioned and try to level, level it out a bit. And those are definitely pushing through, so that's good. I'll try to get it leveled out pretty well, and then I'll screw the bottom layer against the wall. Then finish screwing the top screws in. Alright, there it is. This is the hot side going up. And uh, we got the cool air side coming down from inside. This is pretty sturdy. It isn't going anywhere. If we take the turbo out, or have to work on the turbo, I need to unscrew these down here. So they're actually going into the turbo hatch. Uh, but I think that'll be okay. So, anyhow... Um, this mounting is done. It's fairly level. I'm happy enough with it. I think it'll work out. It's not too bad. And uh, 
At this point, I'm going to go inside and make sure these come up at the right level. They might have to be trimmed down a bit to be determined. I've got to go in and look. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, permanently fasten the painted jerry can rack uh, here in place and uh, use these quarter inch grade 8 bolts and some lock washers or lock nuts, nylon lock nuts to be more specific. So, let me how I've got the impact drill to make this quick. The box end wrench right there so get her we're good or fastened in so actually these uh poke through almost perfectly this one needs to be squished down a little bit but uh might also be able to trim with the razor but after i put trim on like a piece of one quarter ply this might actually be the perfect height and this one can get pulled up a little bit if it needs to be so happy with that that worked out nicely Got a big mess here to clean up. Once I'm sure the heater works, I'm going to put foam in this space. Uh, it's going to be the fire stop foam so that it's temperature resistant. So the hot air coming through this pipe doesn't cause a problem. This one's actually a cold air. That one's the hot air. So, anyhow, um, the next step here is to figure out the electrical stuff and get the uh, fuel line connected to the jerry can. And then I'll be able to uh, wire the power. I think I'm going to fuse it at 7.5 amps. It should draw less than 4 amps because it's a 40 watt 12 volt system. Uh, but I'll run a line for the power um, depending on where that needs to be out there. I have one out there for 12 volt source or I can run it up here in the channel and run it over um, in this channel, run it over to the uh, fuse block. I've got empty spots there for a power source for this. So, I'll probably mount the control panel over here. Uh, I'm not sure of the height, but for now I'm just going to leave it loose so that as I build the cabinetry I can figure out exactly what height once the bed's built, etc. I want this to be easily accessible from the bed in its normal sleeping position, which should be in the lowered, the lowered position at about that height. So I'm thinking the panel would be right up in here at that level. So... Anyhow, um, that's what I'm thinking. I need to look at the electrical connectivity here and figure out how that works. So from this point, it ought to be pretty simple. I just got to get the wiring harness here connected. Uh, the 12 volt source, positive and negative, right here. I wired long ago. That's going to go to the uh, wiring harness for this. And I do need to drill one hole. Um, although I might I might actually just reserve this for some other use in the engine bay I have to drill a hole anyway, so I'm probably going to drill it toward the edge and then I can run a new 12 volts uh, Lead on a short path through the the wall right over toward the fuse block. We'll just save this for Possibly microcontroller power source or something. Um, I may end up automating something in the engine later So I'll just bunch this up and save it for another purpose. I think um, it actually follows down the left side here when we wired all the automotive wiring. I did this one. So, anyhow, um, we'll get this, uh, probably mount the fuel pump and whatnot right in here, uh, along with the fuel filter. And uh, that'll go up into this line. Um, and then we'll have enough slack to the tank so that the tank can be placed on the ground to fill it. Um, make it a little easier to fill. So, anyhow, uh, I am, at this point, uh, going to call it a night, and uh, we'll resume this next time I'm out here, and probably have a working diesel heater by the time uh, I'm done the next time I come out. Because of the positioning, I am actually going to put a piece of rubber draped over these electrical components in the box, because if this leaks, this fuel line leaks, it would potentially... Probably not, but potentially could cause a fire dripping on electrical components if there happened to be a spark. Um, for that reason, I will get some kind of protective cover for the electrical box here and drape it over in place. I ought to keep the electrical box more clean anyway. I can just uh, connect that to this bracket here and have it flap over to keep uh, any fuel from dripping on the electrical stuff or the electrical box in general. Continuing work on the diesel heater installation, I've got the uh, fuel pump and line connected. I connected the fuel pump and its shock absorber to the wall there. 
got half the filter there hanging. Um, I'll be able to screw the remaining part of the filter on. It's already attached to the fuel tank. So I'm pretty much done with the fill or the fuel side of this. Uh, now I'm going to drill a hole and start splicing in the uh, wiring, and I think we're pretty much done, except for filling up the tank and testing, which I'll do in the daylight. There it is, coiled up with the fuel tank. Got enough here that I'll be able to uh, pull this down to the ground so that I can easily refill it without spilling into the engine bay or near the exhaust pipe, which would make it smoke. And what I'm going to do is use some Velcro strap and I'll hold the uh, I'll hold the excess tubing to right here and then we're also going to be using bungee cords to hold this jerry can over the top and around the side uh, to that rack. I may also put some uh, metal or wood in the bottom to enhance the you know, enhance the uh, the radiant heat protection coming off that muffler um, just in case I don't want to sublime the diesel and create fumes so anyway or sublimate is the word i was looking for so anyway uh that's where we're at i'm going to drill a hole and run the electrical connections and uh hopefully we'll be pretty well finished at that point except for testing it right there i've got the inlet and the exhaust connected i'll uh i'll route this a little differently i'm going to likely find a uh a bit of a bit of tubing or something to uh direct this muffler to flow out an existing hole in the back hatch here. I don't know if you can see these holes. There's uh, this one right here that uh, would probably be ideal for using to exhaust the diesel heater. So I think I'm going to put this up this way and then I'll find some additional metal tubing to direct that out. So we'll probably put a, uh, put a metal band on here to hold this in place. And then we'll have a little bit more tubing coming out of here to uh, actually exhaust out the back. So, and then I'm going to screw the inlet, that black inlet tube to the wall with a uh, band clamp to kind of keep it away from the exhaust. So right now I'm going to go drill a hole for the electrical connections. So what I'm doing now is uh, using a 25 millimeter hole saw. I'm going to cut underneath that foam board and then I'm going to kind of carve out some of the foam board so that it goes up into this area so the holes can actually be about right there and uh, ideally this will be mounted this uh, unit for control will be mounted I think in a cabinet behind the bed about right here but for now I'm just going to get it roughed in and then get the power supply connected to it the whole point of this is to try to be able to work inside the bus this winter with some heat uh, some not dangerous heat because I do have a kerosene heater, but it may Actually cause a fire now that I've got some finished stuff inside here. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole get the wires put in and then I'll get some power to it and uh, See if it tries to start Well, I just broke two hole saws in a row trying to drill some little holes here So I think this is telling me it's time to quit for tonight Anytime stuff just goes this uh, poorly, it's a, a signal to stop. Okay, so we've got a hole here sufficiently sized to bring a wire harness up through. Uh, that is going to uh, be for the control unit's connector along with a power supply. I'm actually reusing the old radiator uh, power um, wiring from the bus. This was the uh, fan control and whatnot for the uh, passenger heating and it's good sturdy wire uh, twisted. I think there's three conductors but I only need two of them but it's nice and coated. So we're going to use this and uh, also the uh, control wiring after I push it up from below. And then we'll wrap this in a wire loom and uh, it should be, uh, should be sufficient for this task. Okay, it's Saturday night, week before Thanksgiving week here. I'm going to be taking the week off. Maybe I'll get a bit more work done on the bus this week. Uh, but anyway, I am right now wiring this diesel heater up. And after that, I'm going to take that kerosene right there and fill the jerry can. And then we'll test fire this sucker. Hopefully it works well. So anyhow, I'm going to get the uh, wire spliced and connected to the fuse block inside for the DC current. 
Okay, so I got those wound. Now I'm going to fold them over and use my Buchanan tool to crimp some copper ends on them. And then we'll wrap them really thick with electrical tape. So we use black on one side and red on the other. The white wire is going to be the positive. So I'll mark it with red tape on each side. So I used my ancient crimping tool. I love this thing. And had some uh, crimp connectors. I can't find caps for these anymore. I'm just going to wrap them with really thick electrical tape. Should be fine with this low voltage, 12 volt low amperage stuff. So anyway, uh, we're going to do that and then we'll uh, bind these together and roll it up and coil it up with the uh, wiring to clean it up, make it neat. After that, I'll be able to fill the diesel. Well, I've got to go inside and make the connections uh, and then I'll check voltages out here and then we'll fill the diesel and start her up. Okay, so I've got the... Uh, DC fuse block connected to the wire here that feeds the diesel heater. Nice heavy gauge wire. Now all I got to do is turn it on and see that it starts up, starts pumping. I actually uh, already filled some kerosene in the tank, so it'll burn kerosene or diesel or off-road diesel. Well, that's a good sign. The screen came on. Now all I need to do is figure out how to start it. All right, so it's on. You can. Uh, you can hear the fan running, you can hear the pump clickety clacking away, and if you look real close, you should be able to see a little bit of fluid moving up. So it is starting to suck some diesel. It's going to take a while to fully prime through that loop on top of the tank, through the filter, etc. So it'll, uh, it'll get moving here in a bit. I believe uh, it takes quite a few cycles for the diesel to fill up the tube, so I keep uh, having to turn it back on. Seems like it times out, but it is making some progress getting fuel moving. Just taking a bit of time. So watching a YouTube video, I actually figured out how to put this in a priming mode where the pump just runs rather than shutting it off and back on many times. I'm going to wait till it's solid fuel coming up into the chamber with no bubbles then I'll run in and just uh, turn it on to actually start firing okay so now we've got some diesel exhaust happening some combustion so hopefully we start pumping fuel and this thing is fully primed all right I hear the combustion starting I guess it's burning off what's already in the chamber I still see a bubble or two in the line after priming it a few times. Now the pump kicked on. So at this point I'm going to go inside and see if we have happy heat. Alright, now the sucker's really taken off. I will be piping this through the outside permanently. So, right now this is just testing. You can see the uh, manufacturing oils burning off of the muffler here. Quite hot. And there we go. It's putting out nice heat. I think at this point I'll go ahead and caulk around these with the uh, with the high temperature caulk or spray foam as it were. Uh, that'll kind of seal that off. Then I'm going to get some uh, wire loom and do the same thing here. Uh, wrap some loom around it and spray that with uh, with some uh, spray foam as well. So, yeah, it's pumping out the heat. This should keep the work area nice during the winter. Um, you know, hopefully anyway. So, there we go. I've spray foamed around. I will trim this back once it solidifies. Better to have a little too much to trim back than not enough and have a hole. So that is heat proof. It should block exhaust gases from coming up and resist the high temperature of, uh, of the hot air coming through.